Hi, my name's Armstrong, and welcome to the back office teardown lab. It's been a while, but I'm back in the hot seat, and I've got something to actually tear down. In fact, to be fair, I've got a lot of things to tear down. Uh, I just haven't been doing it because I've been away. But now I'm back, and I'm going to start clearing my decks really and getting back to some old school. We're going to take it back old school teardown style. So I've got this. This is basically a gate opener and it had magnetic limit switches and at one point they busted um, so we placed one of the limit switches with this sort of actuated one and you can hear it's not making any noises um, and I've noticed recently the gate's not shutting it kind of opens and then doesn't shut and normally when that happens it's something to do with its sensors and what it normally is is that it thinks it's either open or thinks it's shut or thinks it's in one of the sort of wrong states and it refuses to work. So if something's refusing to close, what does that mean? That means it thinks it's already closed, which for this one, this is the closing sensor. So it's supposed to say close when it's this way. So obviously when it's releasing though, it's not seeing that it's released. So I thought I'll just have a look in there. Ooh, it's a bit of juice, a bit of juice in there. Um, to see if there's any way, let me just pop that back a little bit. Let's get a little bit further back see if there's anything we can do in these uh, switches. I think though, when I recall, they were kind of serviceable. When you do dismantle them, they were a little bit serviceable, but I can't remember how. So we've taken the cover off and we can see the contacts there, but I'm just going to take the end off as well. Now I do have, remember it's the middle of winter, so I've got the gate uh, opener outside with, with obviously with its cover off because I've got the cover in here and that's sort of fully exposing all of its electronics to the elements right now. Should have probably put a plastic bag over it, but I thought we'll we're going to be quick, aren't we? We're going to be quick with this one. And you know, looking my looking around the sort of back office desk, and I can't find a bloody multimeter. So stay tuned for more multimeter action probably in a minute, because I'll have to test this somehow. And a lovely YouTuber has actually sent me a classic multimeter, and I'm pretty sure while I was away it arrived. So I'm going to be looking in the box for that that said multimeter what have we got in here so there seems to be a piston Let's just take this screw out so that if I push that it's just a cam pushing a pin out you can see it right there so that's nice and simple um, okay that's good and then there's a spring to push that back so it wasn't really too much in there for us to have a service kind of annoying that's fine. So that just means all of the intelligence here, the intelligence, is going to be inside this black cube. I'm going to see if I can avoid unwiring it to sort of service that. Probably not. Oh, it's a sealed black cube of goodness. Oh, crikey. Crikey O'Reilly. Oh, that is some, some torque required. Let me just switch over to a flat blade. Flat blade new Star Wars movies out. Mm, I kind of I kind of like the idea of it, but I don't really bother seeing pictures. Go and take pictures to watch movies anymore. So I'm conflicted. So yeah, lots of water. Look, corrosion in there. That is never a good sign. So I'm, I'm thinking, and there's a it's not sounding like a micro switch. I thought this was a micro switch, so that could be it. If it's not sounding like a micro switch, even though it is a micro switch, it could indicate an internal problem. How to get this bad boy wadged open? I'm seeing it's definitely unwadgeable, but we need something like a fly, a fine, a flying spludger, a flying spludger, and I don't think. I don't think there's anything particularly to hand, but we'll just use one of these screwdrivers and find a special, special one here. Yes! The screwdriver especial has done the trick. So we've got our cap off again, full of moisture. Moisture is no good because these are digital inputs, so it may be a bit of moisture, it'll be enough just to bloody confuse it. Oh! Hang on, steady, steady. So I poked that right in and it tried to escape all the innards. So let's see what's, oh, it's really, it's hard to see really 
what even happens. I'm pushing that in and I'm not really seeing anything by means of a sort of visual actuation. Clearly it's like a double throw switch though. It should be breaking that contact, but it's not. Let's try again. No, I'm not seeing anything. It is weird, isn't it? How does this work? How does it work? Back a grove, yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So there might be a pin behind here pushing that potentially. And that's pushing against this. More hands needed. Let's emulate that pin and we're going to push this way. Ready, steady, contact. Ah! Now that's totally locked out now. That's not going nowhere. Yeah. Oh, I can feel it. It's it's definitely it's weird. It's got there we go. Now you can see that you can see the whole thing moving. So here you can see there's a gap now between these two pins, and when I push that in. The gap closes, and then as I retract, there we go, there we go. No, no, it's stuck again. Yes, that's a bit better, isn't it? So it's very tempting to cr try to sort of think about dismantling that, and then uh, then I think about all the things that can go wrong when we do, and then think that's probably if it, if it wasn't if the camp oh, if the camera wasn't on, shit. I would probably just fill it with oil and grease and uh, mess around with it that way. But I've kind of gone a little bit further and now I kind of just want to see what's under there. There's a spring. Let's see if we can pop that. Ah. Ooh. Ooh. Ah. Ooh. Ah. Right. There is a lot of spring action. You've got primary spring here. You've got these couple of little detent springs. And another little spring. It's just full of bloody springs, isn't it? I think. I think I'm just going to chicken out and give it a bit of lube. A bit of chicken lube, if I can find some. Um, but first we've got to get rid of that water. So what we're going to do is repel the water. Repel borders! There we go. Let's pop it all back. Right, so now we're kind of back in-ish. Although that's definitely not quite back in. Shoosh. Now, now, now it's all going to go peak tong, isn't it? There we go. Get back. Oop. Let's just make sure that actuates again. And then we will continue the next stage of the process. So there, that's, that's good. So the first thing to do is get something to repel the water. And what I would normally advise for that would be something like WD-40. Um, I don't have any WD-40 in my immediate vicinity, That's, so I'm going to just fill this little cup up with this brimful. Mm, yep, yeah, that's IPA alcohol. I was just double checking that, that wasn't acetone. Don't ask me how I know, that uh, why, why I check things like that, um, because of course if you used acetone you might just melt the whole bloody lot and then you'll be really scuppered. So alcohol like this sort of just plain IPA has that benefit that water is soluble in it but it evaporates very easily so what I like to do is pour it in like that I've got this little cup I mean it's, it's quite it's, it's pretty harmless stuff it might sting your fingers a bit maybe stain your hands fingers white briefly but it will go it will it'll evaporate so what you can do is just pour it in there jiggle it around make sure all the water is absorbed and then shake that out and then you can just do a little blow or put your little hot air blower thing like I've got I mean it is flammable though so just be a bit careful with that and then that'll dry that out so then you'll know there's all the water's gone um, just before I'll just actuate it a few more times while we're here anyway for fun nice it's quite cold in the old back office though you can see it's not uh, immediately evaporating but it's fine. And while I'm there, I'm just going to rub it around. You know, it's good as a general cleaning agent too. It's quite a bit here on the uh, board, which hasn't evaporated, and the board now, it's resin coated, doesn't absorb that. So you could just use it if you wanted with a little cloth and just sort of, you know, clean clean some of these bits off while you're there waiting. You've got these springs and whatever. 
and buff that all off to a nice shiny polish. But I'm just going to do a little jump cut now while we just let that dry off and then we'll just close it all up in a sec. For lubricant, I'm going to use this Ambersil Silicone. Silico oh, bloody hell. Silicone lubricant. And it's not going to need much, but just a tiny bit. And I'm aiming it. I don't really want to get it on the contact so much. I'm just trying to aim it underneath where all the springs and stuff were. Oh, that's a good, good old little jet of it there. Tiny bit, that's all you need. Let's give it another go. Again, keep giving it a go. Ah. Oh. If you remember how that was when we actually started this procedure, it was nothing like this, but now it's chooching. Oh no, that's fine. That's just because it moved a bit, it's got out of misalignment, but look, that's way happier, way happier indeed. So just gonna pop, just dry off that water. We've done that water, there's moisture in there. When I put this together, I might just spray a little bit of silicone again on the gasket. So give it a bit more of a little seal, give it some seal action. I'm gonna give it a shake around. Ooh, yeah, that's all lubed up internally. So hopefully we'll get a nice positive sounding click. Oh, yes, sir, yes, sir. Three bags full, sir. That is marvelous. We're good to go. They're tasty, tasty, very, very tasty. They're very tasty. <laughs> God, I used to love crunchy nut cornflakes. In my opinion, they are the best cornflake variant going. If you've got any cornflake uh, variant uh, uh, opinions, please. Uh, feel free to comment down below and we will uh, start a flame war about how wrong you are if they're not crunchy nut cornflakes. Although I'm trying to think what other variants there really are. You've got regular cornflakes, you've got frosties and you've got crunchy nut. There may be some others that I'm not aware of. Let's switch this back to the flathead screwdriver. When you need that maximum torque you, yeah. oh did you hear that? Yeah, that was a real old cruncher, that was. Crunchiness is goodness. Especially if it's crunchy nut complex. So that's that bit of um, felty stuff that goes on there. And I said, as I said, I'm just going to put the tiniest amount of silicone on there. Just to sort of wet that all back up again. Flip it over. Lock that in. Look at that. That doesn't look very nice, does it? All rusty, rusty label. But I'm not going to do anything about it, to be honest with you. Oh, yeah. This thing's been going for, oh, I don't know, over a decade, and that's the uh, limit of the servicing. So I'm pretty pleased, all in all. The um, Originally, it does use these sort of hall sensor magnets, and they went unreliable, which is weird because you think they're pretty solid state, um, certainly compared to something like this. But then this is a, a, an industrial limit switch that would be used on a sort of production line in a factory. So I guess this is made for many thousands of cycles. But okay, sealing, sealing is probably an issue here. And just down to do this gasket here. I could maybe I'll just give it a little squeeze up here as well of the old silicone. Anything that kind of stops a bit of water might help. And of course, that silicone will give it a lovely shine. <laughs> give it a wipe down while I'm there. And let's pop this thing back on, which is the arm. And you can see, actually, you could mount this in whatever way you need. Again, it's configurable for that sort of factory production line environment. There's some white grease in there. There was a little bit of white lithium grease should be absolute ah oh. yes lovely positive click oops stay down stay boy stay boy keep that tunic button done up let's just crank that down i'm really sp i know i know you can't see what i was doing there but i just had to get that down just to hang on yep i can still hear it contact it's good 
that's that's another job done another job well done hopefully for another decade that would be my ideal wish in this scenario but often often we're not uh, that lucky are we as soon as winter kicks in all this sort of stuff tends to go a bit uh, a bit unhappy what i might do though just to be kind to it Not that I haven't been kind to it so far, thus far. Why don't I lubricate that little wheel? That little wheel it just sits there having to work away all year round. Oh, oh, look at that, like a fidget spinner now. Maybe I'll treat it. I'll, I'll just give it one last little buff. But what I'm going to do, maybe I'm going to treat that in the future. I'm going to replace that with a sort of bearing. How about that? A nice metal bearing. Although I think the old plastic bearings certainly survived thus far pretty well intact. So there, that's how you do it. Oh, that's some good click action. He's working. He's working. So I'm going to go fit that. Please comment down below, like, share, subscribe if you're that way inclined. And as ever, my very very nice YouTube chums. Thank you for watching.